guys, I am here tonight to show you my recipe for chicken pot pie. Um, we don't usually uh, make it like a normal with the pie crust. We just make the um, inside and then we add um, buttermilk biscuits to the top. I'm not going to show you how to make the buttermilk biscuits, but if anybody's interested in the recipe, I can post it. Um, but I'm just going to show you how to make the inside of it. So first, I took and put one and a half tablespoons of oil in my um, skillet or pan. I'm going to turn that on. And then um, you're going to add onion, diced onion, a small diced onion. Um, obviously, um, you can make it to the um, size you want. I chop it pretty finely because then my children can't find it in there and complain that there's onions in it. Um, and then I'm going to let that cook. Obviously, I missed a couple pieces because I got a couple big chunks here going. So take those out. So, um, and then while I'm doing this, I was gonna tell you, um, you can do, you can get a rotisserie chicken and cut and cut it up. You can do like I do, and I just grab like two or three chicken breasts and I put it in my Instant Pot and cook them in like I think about 20 minutes. I put it on, and then I can just shred it up and put it in there. Um, you could add it probably with this um, onion mixture and cook it up and do it that way. I just find it easier and I usually always have chicken breast available in my freezer and I just frost and cook in there and they come out so tender and I can fork shred it. So um, that's why I like doing it. Um, I do that for a lot of meats just because like I said, the pressure cooker works really, really well at um, making that soft very quickly and I like shredded chicken better than diced chicken don't know why but I do so while that is cooking up and again I'm not great with time I just kind of see as it starts to kind of turning um uh, see through that I know I'm getting close and then I let it that cook for just a few minutes by itself um I like to put potatoes in my um, chicken pot pie. Not everybody does. So um, I cheat because <laughs> I'm not going to cook potatoes and stuff. So then I just buy a can of diced tomatoes and then I add that in. And then I don't try to cut my own carrots. I just do the ones. So um, that, honey, what? Did you get your tooth out? Okay, great. Just a second. Sorry, Tucker lost another tooth. Here, baby. Oh, you missed. Where'd it go? Bentley, and that, get back. Wait, no, where'd it go, dude? Wait, you dropped it. Found it. Okay, found it. Okay, perfect. There we go. It is quite the connection bit in here. Perfect. There you go, Bubba. Let me see. Let me see the smile. Oh my goodness, it's a hole in the mouth. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, so then I will add those carrots in and those potatoes because they're already cooked. I don't need to cook them for very long. I just kind of want to get the flavor in there. Oh, my dog is barking. Um, so then, like I said, as I do that, um, you can add celery um, to it also. I would like that. My husband's not a big fan of celery, and neither are the boys. Um, so I leave the celery out. And then you just sprinkle with some salt and pepper. And then let that kind of cook down in there and give it a little pan, a little flavoring. Now, if you wanted to do this from complete and total scratch and do your own potatoes and your own carrots, you're more than welcome to. I'm just too lazy to do that. So. I only usually cook this for about mm, three minutes or so, three to five minutes just till everything kind of just warms up and 
gets incorporated. tablespoons of butter and melt that down Okay, now once the butter is all melted, you're going to add a half a cup of um, flour. And you're going to whisk that in. And it's obviously going to soak up all the butter and make crumbles. So then, after that, we are going to add one and a half cups of milk. And I do this slowly, trying to get it incorporated and making a nice thick roux. And then I just dribble it everywhere. So I add a half a cup at a time. See if I can get some of those crumbles so it's not so chunky. If it is, it's fine. It will um, cook out um, when you throw it in the oven. You won't notice it. just like I said before I add the next half cup I kind of make sure that all the milk has been soaked up by the flour and the last half cup of milk and you can use whatever milk you prefer you can use almond milk you can use soy milk you could use one percent we have two percent in the house so that's what we use but um, anyway works like I said, you're not going to probably get all the chunks out because it's just the way it works, and that's okay. But it should make a nice thick roux. And then you're going to add two and three fourths cups, um, two to two and three fourths cups of um, chicken broth. And like I said, we usually always use the 33% less sodium just because can't tell the difference and it's definitely better for you and I like to add this in slowly also and getting it well incorporated and when it's all said and done it won't be a very thick roux it'll be actually pretty runny just because um, the chicken will um, take and soak up some of that that liquid so will the biscuits when you put them on top so um, it's not going to be a really thick roux right now. It's pretty, pretty runny. That's okay. And once it gets to that point, obviously it doesn't, the heat doesn't matter to make it really thick. So then I just go ahead 
and add the rest of the broth. So I'll add this time a cup and stir it and I'll do the last three fourths of a cup after I get this incorporated. So it kind of looks like milky water. <laughs> Doesn't overly look appealing, but it really tastes yummy. And the last bit goes in. And stir it. Yes, I'm having chicken pot pie tonight. So then once you get that all stirred in and then you go ahead and take and add your chicken. And so I'm going to add my chicken in there. And then you're going to go ahead and add in those carrots and potatoes. In my case, if you want, like I said, just do carrots and celery, you're more than welcome to do that. I like a more veggie pot pie than probably most. And you're gonna stir that all in. And it actually, you know, gets fills in pretty well. It's still obviously a little runny, but it's not too bad. And then once you've done that, um, you can add some thyme to that. And I actually have some fresh on hand that I bought for another reason. So I'm just gonna take and go ahead and add that in if you just have um if you have just the dried that's fine too i figure while i have it i'm just gonna go ahead and use it so fresh is always better right And like I said, I'm not great with um, <laughs> measuring, so I just kind of add until I feel like that's probably a good amount. Get all the flavor that I want. And go ahead and stir that in. It looks so yummy. And then you're also gonna add um, some parsley. And I do not have any um, parsley that is um, not or fresh, so I'm just gonna add my parsley flakes in. Again, you can kinda add to your desire. So, and I add that in and stir it up. Honestly, cannot remember to tell you how to um, how you long you cook them. <laughs> There's a um, I want to say it's like 20 minutes, and I'll post it um, in the in in description. I believe it's like 20 minutes without the biscuits on top, and then about I think 10 12 minutes with the biscuits until they start to brown up. Like I said, I make homemade buttermilk ones because. And you can get the refrigerated ones. You could get the frozen ones. You probably have to let them defrost out, but you could probably use those also. Um, so that is how I make my chicken pot pie. I will show you what it looks like here. That's what it looks like when it's all said and done. And it'll fit in a um, nine by 13 pan. And then like I said, whatever you wanna use for biscuits. And then I will post all the rest of the details. If anybody has any questions or would like the biscuit recipe, just let me know. Bye guys.